box would burn for seven days and seven nights. Probably hundreds of thousands of manuscripts were destroyed. Monasteries were burned down, monasteries were destroyed, uh, books were taken out of the monastic libraries and burned. And so this was a, a total devastation of, of Tibetan literary culture. You have to climb up high, high mountains and then deep valleys and then high mountains. Ten days by horse, twelve days by army truck, three days by jeep to Indian border, then two days by walking. People were just fleeing, surviving their lives. Many of them came out, were, were put on yaks. Some of the yak loads fell into the rivers or off cliffs. Some were lucky. They were able to bring many t Tibetan texts uh, across the Himalaya. But they were keeping them secret. They are afraid of losing their texts. India was a controlled society in those days. The phones were tapped. They opened everything. They were very concerned with any American that had something to do with Tibetans. There was this great CIA fear, and we were, we were really putting Tibetans to work at CIA missions. Gene Smith, I would say, really stands out as a person who really plunged into indigenous Tibetan writing and just sort of broke open the whole thing. This old lama, Deshun Rinpoche, had equipped me with letters to every great lama of the day. And that's how I became trusted, because of the trust they placed in Deshun Rinpoche. I was able to do almost anything I wanted. He had a house in Delhi, and this house in Delhi was famous. Whenever a great lama would come to town, oftentimes they would stay with me themselves and their party. This was like an uh, airport or uh, the embassy, you know. And I always thought, really, he is the cultural ambassador who represents both East as well as the West. He studied with uh, very important lamas, and they all thought extremely high of him. And here he is from Utah. When you want to do something, you find bureaucratic precedents for it. It was very hard to find uh, almost a few pages of text. But so what was finally had come to India, those were like treasures. So to round up what was available, was, that was so crucial. We figured out a way of buying books to support the publication of the books. When all of a sudden so many books were being published under the auspices of the public law for any program, Rumble Library Congress, which was actually Gene's brainchild. We thought that it would be better to publish what was available in India, Nepal, Bhutan, Sikkim. Then we sent people out to the hills to print from the blocks that already existed. It was amazing how many blocks existed in these areas. Gene was printing Tibetan texts, unique texts that otherwise would have been lost. His primary impulse has been to make this extraordinary rich body of material available. He had the idea, hey, well, it would be wonderful to scan the books that we were able to rescue. And then we can make them available over the internet. Wow. How would this library be actually used by these campos who may not even have electricity in their area? They kind of both looked at each other and now they understood, I think, what's in the silver box. This is the everything. Thank you so much. The beauty of modern technology is the entire uh, Buddhist canon I can carry in my pocket with small uh, devices. It was these books first that kind of drew people closer to trying to find out what Tibetan culture is really all about and what Tibetan Buddhism is really all about. But of course, there are many more books. How does one man, who would do everything possible to keep from going to war, start a quiet revolution against the obliteration of a culture that is not his own? With thousands of Tibetan texts still lost across continents, can Gene Smith complete his mission to collect and preserve this ancient literature and return these documents to a people still in exile? This is a contribution not only to the Tibetan people, but it is a contribution to entire humanity. The scriptures are the 
essence of the transmission. Without the scriptures, this would, not, this would have vanished centuries ago, and it would be dead. And it's not just Buddhism. It is about Tibetan history, it is about uh, Tibetan language, it is about po Tibetan politics, ethics. Without the books, uh, you know, almost the culture will end. <laughs>